Hi there and welcome to my new video, I'm Paul Wollen and I'm really glad to see you here. Today I will show you how you could sync your loops and samples of various tempo to your project's BPM in FL Studio 20, all of those fastest and easiest ways possible. That will include drum, synth loops, acapellas, audio stems and recorded instruments or synths and how to detect any audio file, any audio recording tempo and to fit it to your project, to your needs. Although in most cases it is a really straightforward process here in FL Studio but there are gonna be times and situations when you wouldn't have any idea how to pull it off in there. And besides all that you're gonna learn tons and tons of valuable hacks and tricks regarding those issues. So let's do not waste any time and dive right into the project of FL Studio. As you probably already know, there are some different kinds of audio samples. One-shot samples, loop samples, audio stems or just audio files with recorded data or rendered musical instruments or these could be also acapellas and vocal recordings. When dealing with one-shots there are no hard times and you don't even have to sync them to your project tempo. Logically those are just static one-shots of audio information. There is no rhythm to it so you place them, arrange them within your tempo grid and you are good to go. But when it comes to already arranged and written musical pieces like drum loops, instrumental and synth parts, recorded or rendered or recorded vocals, those have been made within a specific tempo. You no BPM and if your project's tempo is not precisely the same you are gonna need to sync things like that. Just assume that you have a project of a specific tempo for instance 119 or let's say 78 BPM. Probably not a very popular value amongst the sample packs that you are gonna be dropping samples from. And yeah for the record BPM stands for beats per minute and to hear the BPM of your empty new project you activate this metronome here and press play or your spacebar in FL Studio in a pattern or a song mode to hear it. 78 for example is considered to be a very slow tempo but good for hip-hop, trap, feature bass and ambient genres of music. 120 and 130 is a moderate tempo of dance music like techno, trance house and pop music. 150 is pretty fast but good for drum and bass, hard style and things like that. Basically when dealing with fitting samples into your project's tempo you are going to run into a variety of different situations depending on what kind of samples you're dealing with and also how much information about it you already have. There are situations when you have the tempo info in the file's name of a sample or in the name of the whole sample pack. And there are situations when you don't. And the first situation is gonna be way easier, but in case when there is no info, you will have to do some extra work regarding tempo identification, but do not be frightened by that process. It's not really complicated and won't take much of your time. Anyway, let's start out with the classic situation when you have that BPM info, the sample information, and the file name, as in this case with this drum loop. As you can see, it doesn't really fit into my project grid. And I'm also gonna use those other audio stems and loops, and also this vocal a cappella. just to educate you better because there is a slight difference between fitting a loop sample and just an audio sample or recording is not necessarily supposed to be used as a loop in your production. Those things would be audio stems, vocal recordings, effects samples, samples with synth melodies and chords. Yeah, oftentimes you don't want them to be used in a loop. What is a loop anyway? It is a type of audio sample that's been designed or recorded to be played back in a cycle. It basically has a seamless transition from end to start. That's why it's called a loop. Here we have these two audio files placed right at FL Studio's playlist and obviously when we are going to hit play everything is going to be out of sync. The BPM of the project and of those samples are not the same so do not be shocked with this disappointing result just yet because making music is not that easy and we need to get at least some work done before everything is going to work out. The fastest way to synchronize the audio file to your tempo, whether it's a loop or just a plain audio sample, you've got the info on the title or in the file's name, is to just right click over here onto this little icon on the top left corner of the audio clip, right click it and to find command that says fit to tempo. 
Then from this menu, find and hit the button that says type in BPM. Once this field appears, you need to type in the audio files tempo. And you really want to make sure that you will not confuse it with the tempo of your project that FL Studio is already aware of. So be careful. You've got to type in the tempo, the BPM of your sample in here, not the project's BPM. So I'm going to type in 80 BPM and press enter. And we are done. As you can see, it all lined up with the playlist grid. Now this time and with this sample, everything is going to be perfectly in sync with the metronome or within your beat that you've already arranged on your playlist with one shot samples, for instance. If anything is out of sync somehow, the only reason might be if there has been a mistake about the tempo info of the sample from the sample packs manufacturer side. And you will have to find the truth for yourself. But that's the scenario that we are going to get to in a few minutes. What this command, what the thing does when it stretches audio, it stretches or shrinks the timing of the audio depending on the direction it needs to shift to from the original sample's tempo. And that depends on whether your project's BPM faster or slower than it is of your audio sample. If you double click on the file itself, this window will appear. And as you can see, this time knob is being utilized for that. When you tweak it, the length of this sample changes. This multiplicator knob acts almost the same, but a bit differently. So let's not touch it for now. Okay, let's do the same for this acapella I have here that I know a BPM value of, but it is definitely not a loop because it's just a recorded part of a chorus. And as you can guess by the folder where we get this, when you look at this, you will find the tempo info here, 140 BPM. And as you can probably guess, the tempo gap is pretty huge and it is actually a good case to show you a great trick when dealing with situations like that. In such cases, you want to double the time, I mean, divide it by two or multiply it by two to get to the value closer to yours and then adjust the details and fine tune it. And logically, it will still feature tempo, but the playback of a sample would be twice as slow or fast. So in this case, 140 BPM would fit into divided by 2, 70 BPM. So that's what I'm going to type in here when I'm going to do the same operation, the same process for this sample. I'm going to hit fit to tempo, type in BPM, and I'm going to type in 70. So there we go. Let's check it out. Take me away. Take me away. We leave this bed and no one needs to stay Take me away, don't wait for the day So in the night that we will shine and play And let's do the same for those bass and chords audio stems that are may be used in a loop or may just use as audio stems over here. So I know the BPM and I'm gonna hit fit to tempo. Let us now switch to the situation when you don't have any tempo info whatsoever but still you want to fit those samples that you have into your current project. And that's when it's going to be a little bit different for loops and for audio samples that are not necessarily supposed to be used as loops. First let me show you the first method but it would only work for loop type of samples. I mean audio files that are supposed to last for a specific number of bars or beats in your playlist grid because that's what loops have been made for, right? So let's pull up this hat loop over here and we don't know a tempo of it. Apparently it's the same tempo like 80 BPM, but let's pretend that it's not. But apparently, you know, it's a bit faster than your project's tempo. The thing here is now you want to guess, and I really mean guess for how long, how many bars or beats it meant to last. Apparently it's just a bit faster than my project's tempo. So I'm gonna go ahead and assume that this loop, this sample, meant to last for bars, right? As you can see, obviously, you gotta use your logic here, nothing else. If it would be like much faster like that, 
I would assume that it meant to be in my tempo, it meant to be to last like 8 bars. But depending on the speed of musical part in here, you have to decide for yourself what your project would fit. I'm gonna assume that it meant to last like 4 bars here. And now the next thing that I need to do is to open up the fruity wrapper here for this sample and find this time knob again. Right click it and find the command that says 4 bars, those are the suggested like lengths of your sample. There are even options measured in beats here. Keep in mind that there are 4 beats in 1 bar. I'm gonna hit 4 bars and here we go. It sets uh, automatically the length that this sample should last for on your playlist, on your grid. There will be situations when sample meant to last, let's say, 3 bars or maybe 8 bars. And as you can easily see, you don't have those options over here. That's when this very handy tool comes into play. We are going to turn on this thing up here in the upper left corner of the playlist that is called Stretch. And if you can't see this, command make sure that you have the audio clip domain selected audio clips automation clips and pattern clips so make sure that you have this thing selected first and then find this stretch command here now remember this arrow that you used to like cut samples with when hovering above this right edge of each audio clip now with this thing turned on you're gonna shrink it or stretch it out so yeah, if it's the case, if your sample or loop is supposed to last for 8 bars, you're gonna stretch it like that, the way you want it, but by default it snaps to the grid, to the playlist grid, but the evilly tricky thing is that even though it snaps to the grid itself, but you're gonna start with the default value, it's gonna be not on the grid of course, and then it's gonna be snapping to the grid, so you gotta press ALT here on your keyboard, I'm holding it, and then you want to zoom in really closely here to get this aligned with this line here, with this bar grid, whole bar grid. So make it really, really precise and accurate. So the sync would turn out to be very precise. So now those hats are going to be like twice as slow. Now it's really crucial for the resulting quality of your music for you to know about the time stretching modes that FL Studio has in there. I'm talking about those modes that relate to those knobs over here. Because there are actually a few different ones stored in here. Let's start with resample mode and let's hear it. So the original tempo of this file was 80 BPM. I'm gonna really bring it down to 70 BPM. I'm gonna stretch all the audio here. The thing is here, I'm gonna choose resample and start explaining everything about it. So resample, in this mode your audio is going to be stretched in timing and besides that it interferes with the pitch. If you are dealing with tonal music instruments like synth, pianos, guitars, know that when increasing or decreasing the speed of the sample, this algorithm is going to raise or lower the pitch of it and everything might sound not in key at the end. But dealing with drum loops or sound effects where you don't have to care about the tonality that much, it might work better in some cases regarding saving drum transients or it will just sound better compared to other methods in there. And you always want to compare it to stretch mode. This is relatively new algorithm in FL Studio and has been designed to stretch audio in live mode, not messing with the pitch whatsoever. That's the perfect case for tonal instruments so that when they are stretched they wouldn't lose their key. And what is live stretching? Basically, in this mode I can change live or even automate the BPM parameter here. And it's gonna change and vary just like that. There is no processing applied as compared to resample mode, for instance. That's the case when they all not in real stretch mode. Now I'm gonna put them all in stretch mode, just like those guys. So let's now press start and take a listen one more time. As you can easily see, there is no window after I've let go of this parameter asking me to restretch all the samples. It's gonna restretch them live. I can even automate this BPM and it's gonna 
listen and it's gonna react there's no processing whatsoever it's all happening real time here go those two elastic modes it changes a lot of stuff in your audio and it's really bad for transients and the only good thing it does to vocal or some solo musical instruments when you change the pitch value over here with this knob and I'm talking about the precisely about the elastic 3 mono mode what this E3 mono mode does it shifts the format of the vocal up or down when you tweak the pitch knob up or down. So it means when you will be changing the pitch of your vocal part, let's say up three semitones. And let's take a listen. By default, here. Take me away. I'm gonna raise it now three semitones up. That means plus 300 cents. Take me away. Take me away. We leave this planet. No this algorithm is going to make it sound like the vocalist actually performs three semitones higher without this weird chipmunk artifact. There is always a result after raising a pitch in the resample mode. Take me away, take me away, take me away, don't wait for the day, so in the night and we will shine and play. Take me away, take me away, we leave this planet. A huge difference, although it may sound weird when you're trying to raise it way higher, but when we're talking about like plus or minus three semitones, it's gonna sound okay. That's the only good thing about those elastic modes when it comes to pitching, not actually timing in time. It's gonna screw up your transients. Auto mode is basically you're gonna trust FL Studio to figure out the best fitted algorithm and solution for your situation. It's mainly going to choose between resample and stretch trust me that's all it does and as a conclusion for all that i said honestly in most cases i use stretching mode for anything but once in a blue moon i will compare it to resample mode when it's a drum loop or sound effects and see if it's gonna bring any better results that's what i do basically as you just heard and saw whenever you're trying to change the bpm of your song if you've somehow changed the timing and messed up already with the timing of your audio samples and audio clips all of those audio files are going to follow your command and they will shift their timing according to the mode that you've set for each of those so be sure that you've set all the right modes to each of your audio sample because if you haven't you are going to be surprised by those demonic symphonies like we've recently heard when in some audio pitch shifts when in others it doesn't let's say if i would like had some of those audio in resample mode because it's in auto by default maybe if l studio somehow decides that it's best to utilize the resample mode in here for time stretching there is a good solution for that it's in macros stretch Switch all audio clips to resampling or real-time stretching. That means just stretch mode. And I can just click here and I can say OK here. And every of those audio samples now have been switched to the stretch mode. Really, really handy trick. Let me just delete those chords because I'm gonna head to another scenario. If it's not a loop and you don't have a tempo info about it, but it has some rhythm in it, you know, transients and beats like that. So that's why I'm gonna need this chords audio sample again. Those transients like that that you can actually see in there. Maybe it's a drum recording, guitar strumming, synth playing chords or some rhythmic melody. There is a 70 to 80% possibility that you might apply a tempo detection algorithm in FL Studio and successfully have this tempo recognized and this sample being synced to your tempo afterwards. To do this, to detect tempo that you don't even have a slightest idea about, you click on the same spot over here and find the command that says detect tempo. And in this tab, you have some options and don't be frustrated at that point. The only principle that you have to keep in mind that if the perceived speed, the tempo, just by your judgment, when you took a listen, just clicking on this file in the browser, is pretty normal and regular, you hit this option from 75 to 150. If the file's tempo is extremely slow, you better hit the option just above it. So 75 to 100 and correspondingly if it's extremely fast then you hit the one below from 100 to 200 and now i'm gonna hit this 75 to 100 and now it's gonna go through the process of tempo detection for that audio file and right after you will be presented with the result which is in like 70 to 80 percent is correct don't mind those three digits after the point it was just detected as 80 bpm no matter what so yeah 
Would you like to set the project tempo to that value? You might have to adjust the decimals manually. So yeah, I'm not going to do that. Thank you, FL Studio. Now I'm going to, I don't need you anymore. I know the tempo and I'm going to go through the same process over here, like feed to tempo, type in tempo. And I know that the BPM of that file is 80. So basically I'm typing 80. Let's pretend that it's some different BPM and I'm done. Just know that it might work in most cases. If it hasn't worked, well, then it is time to unholster the heavy duty weapons. And you also want to apply this last method, those heavy duty weapons, when it is the hardest and worst case scenario possible. Your sample is not a loop, it is probably an acapella or some random audio stem with synth, slow melody or even pad, some ambient stuff, or it is a sound effect and you do not have any idea what is this tempo, it's hard to see and detect peaks in audio. Yeah, that's the worst situation, but come on, it's not a rocket science we're dealing with here, it's music production, it's even worse. Just kidding. Let's load up this acapella and you will be surprised how easy it is to sync it. So let's find some acapellas. For that I'm gonna get rid of everything here. And let's say I'm gonna start all over again. So many colors in your eyes. I see what's love with no Yeah, let's pretend that I'm having a BPM of like 119. And I'm having this acapella here. I see so many colors in your eyes that I don't know a BPM of because there is no actually BPM value in the name of the folder, neither in the name of the file over here. I know my BPM and I don't have the slightest idea what the BPM of this audio file here. So what I do, I'm gonna solo it on my playlist by just right clicking this little light on the playlist track and then I want to reach over here to find this tap tool from the BPM selector. I'm gonna right click it and find the tab tool here so that this tab appears in front of me. Other ways to open this tab through fast icon is a quick command on your main working panel up here. Yeah, a short note regarding that to add it if you don't have it there. You go up here to the left menu and click view then toolbars and edit. And it's probably somewhere down here and the only thing that you've got to do is to drag it up there and place it wherever you wish to have it. So here is this view temple tapper here. And I can drag it over here on my working panel, just like that. And then I need to close it because it's going to be saved automatically. And there is my tap function here. I can click it and it's going to open just like that. Easy. Here's this awesome tool, the tap. Basically, all that you need to do is to tap with your mouse on this pad and the speed of your tapping is going to be the resulting speed of your project in beats per minute BPM and it's gonna change it in live mode. But you don't want to just sit here and tap away for the eternity. You want to tap along your audio recording or audio data, which you are trying to figure out the BPM of. So basically we're gonna play out this awesome part here. Make sure that you having those buttons turned off. Before actually tapping you want to remember your project's tempo. Mine was like 119 here, I, I can remember that, because as soon as you tap, FL Studio is going to set the different BPM value depending on the speed of your tapping, because that's how you figure out the tempo of your sample. And calm down, it's not hard. Every one of us on the planet Earth has this feeling that we call a rhythm. So listen closely and be very precise at this. So let's give that a go, and I'm gonna tap along while playing back this vocal part. I see so many colors in your eyes I see what's love with no disguise I see shining blinding lights I see so many colors in your eyes I'm not a good tapper, I'm not good at this especially when there is an actual latency in my drivers because I'm recording this video but apparently the tempo is around this value of 130 but after this tapping session please align the start of your sample and find the start of it along the playing grid and make sure the starting point of the audio is in time with your beat or the beat of a metronome so I'm gonna turn my metronome on and I'm gonna find the start of this vocal part where it's supposed to start I see so many colors I see so many colors I see so many colors in your eyes I see what's love with no disguise Yeah, I guess it's gonna go like this I'm gonna align this transient when he says So many colors Colors with the half of the beat here I can start it on the beat and let's 
Let's see what's gonna happen here. I see so many colors in your eyes. Yeah, that's way better. I see what's loving. I think it should work and should start like this. And then what you're gonna do to make sure that you've identified the tempo exactly right, place your playback marker farther down the sample, maybe even closer to its end, and hear if it still fits the beat. Because it may be good and fit the beat at the beginning, but to the end, if there is a difference, like 1 BPM up or down, it's gonna get out of sync, off tempo. So you, you want to check at the end of the sample, at the end of the progress here. Whoa! So many colors in your eyes. So many colors. So colors still to the beat. So basically, I guess that's pretty accurate. If I would just turn it up one BPM, it's gonna shift. It's like more noticeable here. At the start, it's not that noticeable. It's still colors are still at the last fourth beat. Colors. It's not that big of a difference. The huge difference is at the end of it. So that's what you wanna check with the grid and uh, with your tempo so yeah if you didn't get it right from the first try but you feel that you were close to it just shift your tempo one bpm up or down and surely you will hit the spot there when you're done you can actually shift your tempo project tempo back to where you were like 119 but i suggest you do the following you just set this audio sample to stretching mode as you can remember if you've listened closely and you're a good learner you can now just adjust your tempo as you want i can bring it down even to 70 there's gonna be no processing here it's gonna fit i see so many colors in your eyes i see what's love with no disguise that's a good hack here you go, those were all the possible ways in FL Studio 20 to fit and sync audio samples, whatever they might be to your project's tempo. If you liked this video, give it a huge thumbs up, please make sure that you're subscribed to this channel and hit this little bell icon down there. Please ask your questions and share your issues regarding anything in music production domain. I will answer them in the comment or dedicate my next video to it. I wish you all the best and coolest in your production, thanks so much for watching this and I will see you in my next video. Take care.